Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome back to Getting to Know You. Uh, excited to have our guest this week be Margaret Lee, who is the Youth Minister and, um, uh, what is that other title? Human Concerns uh, Director <laughs> at Sebastian's in St. Catharines. Uh, hi, Margaret. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Jack? I'm good. Thanks so much for doing this with me. I I appreciate it. Um, so, uh, so in the Getting to Know You series, I always start by saying, tell me about yourself. Maybe possibly something we don't know about you. Well, I am a product of Milwaukee. I was born in Milwaukee and um, attended Catholic schools my entire life through Cardinal Stritch, where I got my master's degree. Um, and probably something you don't know about me um, would maybe relate to my father, who was uh, co-director of St. Ben's for about 23 years before he passed away. And so as a little kid, I passed out um, silverware and salt and pepper or drinks at the meal program for years. No, I had no idea. That is so cool. I love the St. Benzville program. I had no idea. That That's a really cool thing. Um, the uh, You and I also have something else in common. That is both of our mothers are in ministry. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and your mom's a, a theology teacher at Marquette High. Yes. And, and is often seen around helping you at Seth. With confirmation group at St. Sebastian's, yep. Yeah. Um, she has four granddaughters who attend St. Sebastian's school, and so part of her kickback in terms of volunteering her time, talents, and treasures, she works with me in um, the confirmation program, but really, literally, just like I just mentioned my dad, I pretty much got um, my idea of what it means to give and serve from the two of them. My mom did church ministry for a really long time um, before she actually moved to teaching at Marquette. And so she was also a youth minister and um, RCI person for parishes. And so it kind of was um, a pull when I was able to start working. Like, we need a youth minister, come over here. And then after saying, no, I can't really, I'm gonna go work with at risk youth, um, which was what I really wanted to do, but um, God had a different plan, and I became a youth minister, and working um, in youth ministry in the inner city parishes, I did get to work with at-risk kids, but I found um, being able to work with young people in general is what my passion is, and being able to share my faith is something that nat came natural, and I have grown as a minister in the church. Yeah, well, from my perspective, you're a really good minister. So, um, the and and I and I of course I've met your mom. I never was able to meet your dad, but yeah, you've had some. Uh, sounds like a really amazing influence. And I've met your mom because yes. she was in charge at Cardinal Stritch when I got a master's degree there. Oh yeah, she's uh she's kind of all over the place. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and you started to touch on my second question. The second question is just tell me tell us a little bit about your faith and of, everyone knows your role uh, at SEBS, um, but talk about kind of, I don't know, uh, uh, how long you've been working at SEBS and what your kind of day-to-day uh, jobs are, what, what, it, what you're most excited about in, in the role that you do at SEBS. Okay, so something about my faith, um, it's been very much, it initiated, was given to me, as it is with lots of young Catholics. Um, my grandfather, when I was little, I spent a lot of time with him. He was a permanent deacon until about two years ago when he retired at 89. Wow. Um, and he did uh, prison ministry. And so uh, I was the oldest in my family and on my grand as grandchildren with my grandparents. And so I've always been like um, a little adultish and when my cousins would play, I would listen to my grandfather's Bible sessions um, that he had planned. And um, he pretty much was very much influential, still my favorite person in the whole entire world. Super humble, super compassionate, slow to anger, all of that. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times when I talk about my faith and share my faith, it connects to him. Um, my parents 
pretty much really lived it out, but I learned a lot from my grandfather in those Bible studies and just watching his interactions and being really um, the closest thing to a saint for me. And so when I am, when I try to pass on the faith, I'm really often channeling his spirit because I think he does a very good job embodying what Jesus really came for us to learn, which is to love thy neighbor as much as we love ourselves, which is the gospel reading this Sunday. Well, um, there you go. That's good. Yeah. How, how <laughs> um, and so, yeah. yeah, so that's pretty much my faith. I mean, I went to Catholic schools. Um, I intentionally picked a Catholic university in Xavier University. Um, and for the first time when I was in college, I was able to like explore. I went to some different churches. I went to the Catholic retreats on campus um, and was able to like double down on my yes for confirmation. And, and that was also influential to my faith in, in terms of really being comfortable and talking about it and sharing my faith and not um, having any issues with the Catholic identity that was bestowed upon me. So as far as my responsibilities at St. Sebastian's and St. Catherine's, um, I've been doing youth ministry for about 16 years. And um, there was a period of time where I was Christian formation director at St. Michael's and St. Rose, where I was pretty much just organizing um, and setting other people up to do it. And at St. Sebastian's, I was really able, I'm really able to now be connected with young people. And that is the part of my job that I really um, favor. <laughs> um, not just teaching them this is the Catholic tradition, this is scripture, this is sacraments, but just sharing of who I am and helping them to be the best that they are, giving them a kind of tools that will help them have their faith for themselves and be the best person that they can be is really what I enjoy. Um, and, what, I, and what I notice, like in your approach uh, with your small groups, it's like you're also kind of able to walk the faith journey with them. Right. Yeah. Um, I think it's probably most beneficial for young people in terms of meeting them where they're at. And so not trying to only teach and only direct and only say this is good and this is bad, but to also share my trials and my um, personal faith with them is where people are sometimes have that aha moment. Yeah. Um, and I've learned that from some of my professors and some people that who are helped guide me. And so it's just kind of like, natural for me to hopefully be passing on a faith that's not just um, knowledge, but that lived faith in terms of how can I really live the calling of holiness mm -hmm. and at 14 or 16, which is much more difficult than it was when I was 14 or 16. Yeah, it is. Uh, we, we, yeah. When, we were, when we were that age, we weren't constantly attached to our devices. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. Social media. Yeah, exactly. Um, the, I want to just go back for a second that your testimony, your witness about your grandfather was just so touching that he seemed <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Uh, it, was that your mom's dad or your dad's? Yes. My mom's dad. Your mom's dad. Wow. You've had mm -hmm. some pretty amazing mentors in your life. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, and my dad's mom is actually Mexican, super Catholic, um, 13. Teen children and all the way up until she passed last year super religious i literally would bring her ashes when she was no longer able to physically go to church bring her communion and so on both sides of my family yeah yeah strong lineage there <laughs> um what uh what you also have a kind of a new role you're taking on this fall which is the human concerns part of that how is that feeling it feels like somewhat of a natural progression yeah. um, because I've done everything formational and this is something that's actually I've been part of last year with the parish's initiative with facing racism and the just faith small groups that we had so um, now that I am 41 um, I feel like 
moving on, you always want to grow. And this is a position, part of a role that's actually going to allow me to both grow and use my time, talent, and treasures in a way that um, is important and um, needed, especially in where we're at right now in our communities and our country and our world. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a it's a totally relevant issue right now. And the church has to be on the front lines of it. And uh, I think I think we should all be proud of the work that Human Concerns does. Uh, Especially at St. Catharines and St. Car- and St. Sebastian's. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. um, OK, cool. Uh, good. Uh, my last question for you is, uh, as you think about the future, uh, you kind of talked about where you've come from, what you're doing, what do you think about the future? Any hopes or dreams about the parish or the world itself? Um, My hopes for the parish, um, we just kind of touched on the fact that I, that the human concerns thing is already well established, a moving vehicle at these two parishes, which makes me proud to be a part of. Um, But just, that we would make strides in terms of the people who are already interested to the people who may be interested but not involved and maybe even interest some people that it's not even on their radar. Right. Um, so with the um, Human Concerns Committee as a whole, I think that's one thing that we're trying to start moving forward is some actual action items that people can take um, as far as human concern issues. And in addition to that, one thing formational wise that I'm really hoping to address and move is the connection between our middle schoolers in terms of the parish middle schoolers and the school minute, the school middle schoolers so that they can forge relationships, learn off of each other and grow with each other and just have a safe space to socialize and pray and learn about how to live their faith. Yeah. Yeah, building a bridge. Yes. And if I have to say one thing in the world, I really hope one day before I die, everyone has access to clean water. I think that's a wonderful goal. (laughs) (laughs) And should be should be an easy thing to accomplish. And it's not so. Uh, Anyways, okay, well, Margaret, thank you. Uh, It was I I learned I I work with you now. And I've learned some new things about you. One minute. So thank you so much. Uh, Blessings on your journey. Thanks again for doing the interview. Thanks for asking. Okay, have a good day. Thanks. 